Well, welcome aboard uh, North Star of Herschel Island. My name is Bruce McDonald and I'm the third captain of this ship that was originally built in 1935 for two Inuit, uh, in particular Inuvialuit uh, fur traders. The two top choppers in Canada, Fred Carpenter and uh, Jim Wolke, ended up having her commissioned and she was built at the GW Nice Boat Works down in San Francisco where they were building many, many of the the Arctic ships. When they drew up the plans, they took the plans to the fellow who was importing the ships, uh, Christian Peterson, and when he looked at them, uh, he he saw that they wanted this massive boat built, these huge fur planks on oak frames with iron bark. This was the height of the Depression, and people were standing in bread lines down south. And he gave them the price, and he figured that he knew they were doing well in the fur trade, but he didn't think they'd come up with the money. But the next day, uh, Fred came back with a box full of money and said, here, go build me my boat. This was the last of the cargo ships to be sent up into the Arctic. So this was uh, sort of the cherry on the cake for Nice as well. So North Star was purpose built for for working in the harsh environment of the Canadian Arctic. and In fact, uh, they knew that when uh, she'd be working up there that she would be only uh, maybe two weeks, sometimes three weeks out of the whole year in the water. The rest of the time it was frozen solid, so before climate change. She's double hauled, uh, thick fur planks on oak frames uh, spaced every foot. Then there's a complete second hull of iron bark for ice sheathing to protect the inner hull, but also to stop the caulking from spewing out uh, during thaw. The ship is egg-shaped, that's just so the ship gets squeezed out of the ice. Um, if they are slab-sided, then the ships would get crushed in the ice quite often. So the dogs, uh, the sled dogs that the Inuvaluit uh, and the rest of the Inuit used is the way they made their money. It supported their whole lifestyle. So the dogs were very well taken care of. Fred Carpenter wanted his dogs to be more tough, more resilient, so he trapped a wolf and he used the wolf for breeding. And that wolf was also kept on board and the dogs were all kept chained up forward, not very friendly beasts, but back aft was the, the big bad wolf and that's also where the head was. So if you needed to use the head, you had to lay aft and, uh, and visit the wolf. So North Star, she was launched at Herschel Island but the route that she ran almost immediately, her home port then became Saks Harbor at Banks Island, which is the western entrance to Canada's Northwest Passage. They would do coastal navigation and go down to uh, Bailey Island and then over to Tuktoyaktuk and then up the river up the Mackenzie to Aklavik. Um, they also made trips over to Arctic Red River and then they would reverse course to come to go back to Saks Harbor at the end of the season. So just really operating with, within that area. Fred uh, retired in the 60s and uh, the ship stayed on the beach in Saks Harbor for six years while he tried to find an owner but it was very difficult to find a customer up there. There's not very many people and word couldn't get out. But he sold the ship to Sven Johansson. Sven was uh, originally from Sweden and he'd gone off in the war and become disillusioned with humanity so became a, a self-imposed hermit um, just uh, trapping on the land there and so he'd heard about North Star and he was uh, he really wanted to see her and so one time he made a trip to Saks Harbor and he and Fred hit it off. Fred gave him uh, a screwdriver and said go make a survey and they came back and struck a deal. So we purchased the ship uh, from Sven in 1996. And so we were looking for a ship to raise our two young daughters on and we made friends with Sven and he'd had a change of heart so he agreed to sell the ship to us and uh, we moved on board with our two daughters and sailed full time for the first two years and then we invited in a foster son and foster daughter who were about our kids ages. 
so after uh, my, my wife died unexpectedly, I spent about a year trying to decide what to do with the ship and I eventually put her up for sale and the Vancouver Maritime Museum is very interested in acquiring her and they started a campaign for that. They worked on that for about a year and in that time I received five offers from individuals or companies around the world but I really felt that this ship is such an important part of Canadian history that she should stay in Canada and so I put them at arm's length and when the, when the museum uh, backed out I put a for sale sign on the ship and a a local woman um, who'd walked past the ship and loved the ship and loved nautical history and just felt a, a real connection to her uh, contacted me right away and within a week we had struck a deal and she was very keen on restoring the ship so she sought out a professional shipwright who would be able to take on a project of this size and magnitude while while well, really uh, respecting and honoring the, the history of the ship. So they found favorite boat works and she's contracted with them. That's who's capable hands and our star is in now.